Hey guys, welcome back to Minecraft and my super duper lapis testing world where I would like to show you each of the 10 bosses that I've been working on. Now if you don't know what these bosses are for, click this button over here to go back to the last episode. Alright, now with that done, let's have a look at here. Okay, so in this first one, boom. I've left it on peaceful. Uh, right, in this first one we have Sir Blobbington. The most blobbiest blob of all blobbies. Um, th this guy's relatively easy as the as the, um, the the bosses go, but then he is the first one. Uh, as you'd imagine, he is just a giant slime. Um, I haven't really messed around with any of his attributes. He is literally just a giant slime. Oh, he follows you from a very long way away and can move fast. Um, second up, we have the general this is round two he is a long range tracker from um of a skeleton he can spot you all the way across the uh, the entire of the uh super mythical like uh, um arena thing wow english steve use it um uh, he's got punch and knockback uh, no not punch and knockback just punch and power and such forth on his bow and to move on to the next round you also have to kill that horse i'm not going to let you keep the horse that's that's just not going to happen um and for some reason i've spawned him in the glass hopefully that horse will just walk out at some point uh level three badass he doesn't look like much and indeed he is just a zombie with a sword this chest plate gives him thorns three though and he looks like my mate decipher which i think is hilarious um he's also really really fucking hard uh this one we have scaredy cat to, to move on you have to kill them both and this ocelot just runs away from you and the blaze can obviously spot you all the way across the arena uh number four we have what we've named monster medley this is all the ranged combatants that i thought would be good at level four we've got a, a skeleton with um, punch on his bow a witch to poison you and then a blaze to set you on fire which is just like all sorts of awesome uh in here we have Witherington, he's the double skeleton. Obviously, both of these guys are buffed up. Um, and yeah, that, that, that's also a challenge. Uh, people have tried having a fight against him and oh, wow, yeah, he, he, he really kicks. Uh, in here, we have possibly my most insidious bad guy. Let's, let's get in here with him. Uh, so you may be able to tell that it's a baby zombie wearing a pair of golden boots, which is just like the cutest thing ever. Uh, he can also one hit you. Um, so yeah, you've got to spot him and kill him. I mean, you can kill him in one go. Yeah, he is weak, but you can't see him. You have no idea where he is. Uh, level eight, um, we have, oh, hello, my, my keyboard just ghosted out. We have piggyback. Uh, this should be four pigs on it on each other's backs. Um, for some reason, I, I spawned in twice there because my keyboard just ran me into it. Um, but th this is good. They're all ultra hard. They've got like um, golden axes with sharpness on. Golden axe, if you get the reference, guys. Golden axe, yeah. Um, in here we have. I've not come up with a name for this guy actually. Uh, if you can come up with a name, let me know. But th this is awesome. Um, it's a, it's a, a ghast riding a, a magma cream. Um, yeah, just all sorts of awesome. This got, this did start off as a blaze riding a slime, but the blaze set fire to the slime, so I thought, all right, let's try a magma cube, and then the blaze was just hitting the back of the magma cube's head, so I put a, a ghast on top because he's got a further range. And then level 10, of course, is Cthulhu, um, who will be ultra buffed and ridiculously hard to kill. Uh, so that's the 10 bosses and now we're going to go have a look at have a look at the rest of the uh, battle arena. <laughs> All right guys and welcome back server side. So we're in my hut and I wanted to show you the um Battle Arena, yes, that's the one. Uh, many, many things have gone on in the Battle Arena, as well as out here. Um, well, not just out here, also in the Nether. We've been doing a lot of things to make the server just a bit more navigable. Um, unfortunately, this also has caused a whole lot of troubles. Like, on the map, we've put little um, little writings over there. Unfortunately, like there's one up there that you just cannot see unless you can fly. Um, so I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna have to sort out something with that. Um, with this also is a change in the Nether. Um, oh, I'm gonna horribly lag out, so we'll probably cut to just after in the Nether. There we go. Okay. 
Uh, so in the nether we put little things like um, uh, little strips of colour to indicate uh, directions to things and also signposts have started flying up all over the place. Uh, this was me and Misaligned, we went around and did a few things. Um, I noticed that other people have been taking the idea on board, like down here Forrest has been building a, uh, a village. Um, and here we go, a sign full of the, myth, uh, the mythos and on track and stuff. Uh, we're not going to go have a look at Forest. Yeah, let's go have a look at Forest Village. No, we'll we'll wait till we can have a word with Forest and see what he wants said about it before we go off there. Um, now, the main reason we did all these is because over at Spawn we've done a oh oh uh, there we go an information hat uh, hut. Um, I keep thinking hat because this looks like a cat in the hat type hat. Um, I, I, I thought that'd be really cool when we were building it. Again, this was me and Miss Align. Uh, and now that we've uh, after we've built it, I oh I, I'm not I'm not sold. I'm not sold on it. But let's go have a look at the hut. It's not finished yet. There there's still many more things to do. Um, whoop, whoop, whoop. But it starts to get across the basic messages. Um, like in here, we have. The book for, uh, called the Grinder Guide. Um, small blab about don't don't abuse stuff. And here is the location of all the major grinders on server. Um, what else we got? No, we don't want to dispense mushroom stew. Uh, how the chest locking system works. Uh, there are other things I want to put in, like uh, farm locations and and things like that. But we're not here to talk about all that. We're here to talk about the monster arena, which is down this way. So you can see from the outside, nothing really much has changed. Though, if I take a little flight, how weird does that look being able to see all the way down there? Yeah, I, I think that's really freaky. Um, <laughs> but yeah. uh, so down in there, nothing really over much has happened front end wise. Um, there have been a few changes, like this guy has got himself a bit of a makeover. I'm still not sure what I'm doing with this wall. Um, in here, we've added a little semicircle of glass so that we can see the combatants enter the arena. And you'll notice that pressure plate that indicates uh, that you're ready for the next round. Um, and I'll show you the importance of that when we go down here. Woo! So this has been lengthened out, um, so we can get a whole load of stuff going underneath. Uh, straight ahead is just your straight run for if you want to PvP in an epic arena. Um, that that's all this is. It's just a way in and out. Um, teleport button for getting in and out as well. This is nice and useful. Um, lots of players were getting stuck down the bottom, and I didn't know what to do about that. And out here, hopefully I have a smashed in wall, I do have a smashed in wall, where I can start showing you all the massive amounts of circuitry that's gone on underneath here. Um, now it looks confusing, I know it looks confusing, but we'll, we'll, we'll do a quick talk through and we'll, yeah, hopefully you'll be um, enlightened about what happens. So, splash down, player comes in, steps on this. Now this sets them to uh, the team that's going to take on the, the thing, Every, it's just to put everyone on a team for all sorts of reasons, for, for player detection reasons, for score counting reasons, for just just for everything, I have to put everyone in the same team. Um, what what you would then do is run up here, step on the pressure plate, and the first round of combat would start. Um, so we'll we'll go in here and we'll explain why that is. So you 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 stand on the pressure plate, and that triggers this line here. Now that trigger comes along and fires this line of redstone which activates all this line of command blocks this way. Now, these command blocks aren't doing anything fancy, they are literally just testing to see what round number we're on. Um, so this is round one, round two, round three, round four, N nice and simple, right? Okay, so after testing for the round, this comparator ticks off for whichever round it is, and that then summons the, the boss. Um, so there we go, as far as players concerned, combat has started, they, they start fighting. Um, under here, the next thing that happens is this line gets triggered which puts the uh, the scoreboard up by one. So you know, this is round one, round two, round three. I don't think this one wants to do it, thinking about it, because I'm going to start on round... The, the thing starts on number one, doesn't it? I don't know, I'll, I'll figure that out in a second. Um, so yeah, so we trigger that and then this little AND gate ticks on. Um, now the AND gate is set up because we have the one game clock ticking over. Right, so when, when you press that you're ready to go, this game clock will start ticking. 
I'm not sure I'm going to turn that on and off yet. Um, but yeah, this game clock will start ticking, which one, test for any players in the uh, the arena. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, test for any players in the arena, or more importantly, test for when the players are not in the arena. But we'll, we'll talk about that uh, when we go topside. And ticks this and gate on and off. So they're all set up. Um, the only one that's going to trigger is the one that's had its torch underneath turned off. So whichever round we're on, that AND gate will start pulsing on and off. Um, and then this line of command blocks starts working. Now this line of command blocks, um, each one is going to end up exploding like this. Uh, there's so much stuff that needs to be done. This is to check to see if the boss is dead yet. Now, for things like the skeleton, that's going to be nice and easy. For the general, sorry. That's going to be nice and easy. Just check to see if the general's dead, see if the horse is dead, do an AND gate, trigger the next round. Um, for badass, it's nice and simple. Has a skeleton been killed? Uh, has a zombie been killed? Yes, he has. Trigger the next round. Things like the giant slime, that's a different matter, though. Um, so, obviously, you get lots of slimes um, per boss, and you've got lots of different team members trying to kill the slime. <laughs> eat some of this. Um, so what happens when they all kill lots of individual slimes and nothing really totals up? You see we've got a total here. Um, well what we're doing is we're testing for any player in the in the team um, to score a kill. Oh, I've not closed my square brackets here. Uh, when they score a kill it takes that kill off them and adds it to subject one. Now subject one is just a random player. Um, he, as far as I'm aware subject one is not a player that exists. Um, if, if Subject 1 is watching this video at any point, hi, nice to meet you, please don't come here ever. Um, you, you will just break everything and I don't, I don't, I don't want that. But yeah, once, once that's done, we then test to see if Subject 1 has the, the total requirements. Um, and then reset the counters, set the next round up and away we go all over again when they step on the pressure plate to indicate they finished the round. Woo! Right, well that's a lot of talking. Um, the only other thing is what happens when uh, individual team members die. Um, it's quite simple. When they step on the opt-in bit, their home gets set to this little timeout box up here. I, I've not, I've not set stuff out, but I have measured out how far away from the detection system this is. And up here is out of, out of reach of the detection system, and you get to watch what your teammates are doing, which is. Well, I thought it was quite an important bit. Uh, and then at the end of the round you get let out, or if everyone's dead you get shown the exit. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, th there we go. That was a bit of a prattle about what's going on. Um, right, I have a few aesthetic things to do, like put this, uh, th this, this panel in here. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, I want to figure out where to put some uh, potion dispensers. Well, vending machines. I want people to pay me gold for my potions. Um, and I'm not sure whether we're going to put them on this back wall here or whether we're going to put them on this back wall here. Um, and I'm not sure whether this Know Your Enemy will actually be it. Um, so yeah, there we go. That's that's what I've got going on with as well as things like this. I'd like to do this wall. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll cut back in a bit with another progress update. Wow, that was a few days good building. As you can see, we've got this end wall done. It's looking nice, if I say so myself. It does just kind of just carry on the theme. You know, we've got the dark oak pillars with the green clay. Um, I do like our little mascot up there. I haven't given him a name. Oh, hello. There's a golden clad mascot here. Be, be gone with you. No, no one likes you. Where did? You, how did you even spawn in here? It's half slabs everywhere. Unless he came in on top of my jukebox. All right, anyway, yes. It's looking good. I like the mascot. Um, what else have we done? We've uh, painted up, well, rebuilt the drop chute. It's all like snow and stuff now. It looks nice and clean. Um, and drops you down into this little welcoming area, which is nice. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, particularly these things, this glowstone and, and nether, um, yeah, nether brick stairs. Uh, it works well, apart from this doesn't actually give out any light because obviously the stairs are solid blocks and yeah. Um, so I left a hole up here for us to look through. Um, well, at least the light to spill out. And then after doing that, I put light in the bottom of the pool, just because, you know, we need more light everywhere. Hey, uh, the return button you know about. Opt-in room, it's looking good. Um, there's secret hidden door here that I'm going to admin my way through. Um, it's just a little... 
that will fix the door it's quite nice uh, in here as you will immediately see by these gate controls a lot has changed um, it is still in essence the same machine we've still got the player input up here which starts the one clock to rule them all uh, which then checks which which game mode we're on uh, not which game mode, which game round we're on and then does death checks all along here uh, the death check cycles I'm quite nice of the suffering of chickens do you hear it We'll talk about him in a second. Um, uh, we've got a nice reset line over here, uh, but I'm not gonna go into full detail of what all this does because uh, most of the time it just ends up with me prattling along, uh, prattling along to myself about things that other people just find a little bit boring. So if you want me to, to go through what everything here does, um, yeah, dro drop me a line in the comments or something. There, there's a lot to it and it, it is fairly linear apart from a few nasty branches, but we're, we're, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that at some point. Um, looking outside in the arena, not a great deal has changed out here. Um, though, pff, I don't know. Uh, do you, do you class a gate as a, a a great deal of change? Now, there's a double double piston extender under this set here, um, which push this iron up to touch this, and then you've got piston bars at the bottom to to lock it up tight, which is quite nice. Um, around here I've just been adding a little bit more detailing to, to all the, the stonework. It was looking a bit a bit flat and boring. Um, so yeah, I've gone around and done a few things. There's still a, a, a lot more that needs to be done, obviously. Um, but it's looking good. Uh, coming up with some designs for the walls up there. Uh, that That's just moving on. Um, oh, and then we come to this poor thing here. He's been burning for about a day and a bit now. Um, I did have a video, well, I do have a video of when there were three of them in there. Um, unfortunately, he's the last surviving one. Uh, this guy has 4 million health. Now, the last one was 400,000 health, and he died this morning, and that was like a day. So, you know, with simple... Um, what division multiplication um we'll we'll know that he's going to die in 10 days time well in nine eight nine and a half something like that uh, <laughs> right yeah so anyway that's the major redstoning done and stuff we can get back to like actual minecraft where i'm like hey now i'm going to build something good um so yeah now i'm going to go build something good i'm going to grab a load of stuff and we're going to talk about what's going on with the wall with the wall around the back of there um and that may apart from this bit in here be the final bit we do of this before i go off and do something else because we've got a working beta version of the game in fact it, it, it's a little bit polished now we've had people go through and m run a few tests so i know it's not going to break down on me when i turn my back um but yeah building stuff making things pretty i'll see you in a sec Right guys, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. Um, I, I'm, I'm overshooting, so I can't really do pretty things with you on camera. Though I have done a few pretty things. There's this one here, and there's one over the other side. Um, but yeah, I'm overshooting, so we're going to have to leave that till next episode, where I will be doing this... ish. And a whole load of other stuff, because I'm a little bit sick of this. Um, we're going to use something to do with these almost immortal chickens. Yeah, he's still burning away. Poor, poor chickens. And, I don't know, maybe some knockback sticks or something. But until then... Oh, cycle through too quick. Thank you very much for joining me for this building adventure, guys. I will see you next time. Bye!